Good morning. I'm about to spend my Saturday going on a hike. I'm so excited. But before I go, I wanted to do a little vlog and connect. Today I want to talk about teaching youth through questions. Now, if you're an adult, chances are you've had kids ask you quite a few questions, whether you're a parent or a teacher. Kids are pretty much asking adults questions all day. Now, why is that? We've set up this structure where it's appropriate for children to be asking adults questions and for adults to be delivering the answers. Now, if youth are asking you questions, that's a wonderful thing because it means you've created a relationship with them where they feel comfortable speaking with you and talking about things that they're curious about. So it's a great setup. However, just because a child or a teenager asks you a question doesn't mean that providing them with the answer directly is the best way for their development. Here's an alternative process that I like to use when youth ask me a question. I'd love for you to give it a try and then leave some feedback in the comment section about how it went. The first thing I do when a child asks me a question is I say, well, what do you think? Because oftentimes children are asking us questions, but they never even stop to think about their own point of view. They automatically assume that the adult has the answer and that that's an easier way to approach their idea than to start to think about what their view is. So I first throw it back at them and ask, well, what do you think? And they take some time to think about it. And if they haven't come up with any answer, then I'll say, to the rest of the group, if, if it's in a classroom or if it's in a group setting, I'll ask the others, well, what do you think? Can anyone help her out? Can anyone help him out? And many times, almost always, somebody has an answer, and that's the starting point for a conversation. If nobody has an answer to the question or nobody has any idea about the question, the next step I'll go to is finding out who else is curious about this question. So I'll say, raise your hand or let me know if you're also curious about what this person asked. And usually when a person's asking a question, they're not the only one who's curious about the answer. So a lot of times many people will raise their hand and be curious about it. And then I'll follow up with, well, who would like to take responsibility and try to get us an answer next time we meet? So whether it's tomorrow or it's a weekly meeting, that person would go home and do some research either on their computer or speak to people. They, they can interview their parents, interview people that they know, interview other kids, and try to get an answer, try to figure out what they would want to bring back to the group. And then that becomes the new starting point for discussion. And adults can always fill in here and there, but having a starting point be an adult answering a question for a youth is not the best way to go. The best way to go is for the youth to try to figure it out for themselves and when they've exhausted all options, then it becomes a dialogue and then the adult helps the youth to understand what the question is and to try to figure out the answer. Another great thing about interacting this way is that when someone asks you a question and you answer directly to them, it becomes only relevant to the two of you. When you open it up to the group, you get to engage an entire group and perhaps it's something they were all curious about as well. I've been known for teaching entire lessons around asking questions. I'll start the conversation off by asking youth, what is a question? And then we'll get into what is the purpose of a question? What are some reasons people ask each other questions? Is there such a thing as an easy question or a hard question, a good question or a bad question? What is the underlying meaning behind questions? Why is someone asking you a question? Is it because they want you to do something for them? Is it because they need an answer? And what I found when I'm working with teenagers specifically, they identify the difficult questions as the ones that trigger our vulnerability when we answer. So the personal questions, the questions like, do you like me? Those are the questions that people are scared to ask, yet those are the difficult questions. And we talk about that. We talk about the meaning behind the questions and how do you feel when you're asked this question versus that question. I use this lesson in particular before we do any sort of panel discussion. When we have people come in and they sit on a panel, the purpose is for the youth to ask them questions. Yet a lot of times it takes a moment for youth to formulate their questions and to start to think about what am I looking for from this person when I ask them a question. So next time you're asked a question by a child or a teenager, try an alternative response. Try throwing it back at them and see what happens and let me know.